Hello, welcome back to my series on uh, good books that I recommend. So I've spoken before about um, self-sufficiency, off-grid living, that sort of thing, the actual lifestyle if you like. Um, this episode I'm going to talk about the actual buildings. Um, it's something that people have asked quite a bit about the buildings that I've constructed here. Um, and I haven't made a video on them because I didn't film any of the process of building them. I didn't actually have any filming equipment at the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> crazy as it sounds. Um, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but yeah, there was literally nothing to film them with. Anyway, there were two books that I found very useful, and I'm going to talk about them today. First is this one, uh, low, a low cost pole building construction, the complete how to book. I'll put, as always, put details in the description on the full title and author. Um, the other one, Homework, Hand Build Shelter. So one of these is instructional and the other, I guess, is inspirational. It's actually this one, the inspirational one, if you like, that I found to be more useful um, in the long term, although this one told me how to construct the barn that I'm sat in now. So this barn, as with my workshop, as with mm, a couple of the other buildings here, uh, um, is a pole barn. Uh, by that I mean it's got a telegraph pole at each corner. Um, it's got some on the sides, it's got some down the middle. The poles hold the structure up and the, the poles hold the roof the walls then are just infill. They're not like a, a traditional house where the walls actually hold up the roof. And that means that you've got much more freedom of, of the walls. You can put windows where you like, um, you can put doors where you like, and you can build a, the walls out of whatever. Um, in fact, if I did it again, I'd probably build them out of straw or cob or something like that, rather than, than wood. Um, anyway, that's by the by. This book then, does detail how to go about pole barn building, which is very useful. I found it a frustrating book in places, to be honest, and I think that's because of my lack of practical knowledge of building in general, as it was at the time. Now, uh, quite a few years down the line, I can read this book and it does make more sense to me. So if you've got no experience of building, like I had when I started here, um, you might find it a bit of a slog, but probably, I, I suspect, if you were to have this book with all its details, I mean, for instance here, just opening it randomly, we've got some really nice clear drawings on fastenings and ways of joining wood together. And that kind of stuff is invaluable and it's, it's detailed and it's here in, in black and white for you to refer to whenever you want. So I think something like this as a reference book and then watching, for instance, YouTube videos of people making um, pole barn constructions, this book would then be a lot easier to read because you'd, you'd have seen it demonstrated in real life as it were. Whereas because I didn't have any internet access or, or definitely no YouTube in internet, um, back in those days I just had to have a go at it and sort of work it out from there. So anyway, that's that's that one and it's got, so in here we've got all kinds of the techniques of it. I mean it is, it's an American book so a lot of it's um, in reference to America and, and how deep you should do the foundations compared to, um, depends on the, the frost in your area and things like that and the details in here are very American there. But the actual construction is is pretty much universal. I mean, something I found confusing at the time is that it, it has different ways of going about it, which now I think is brilliant. And at the time, I just wanted to be told how how to do it. This book is much more useful if you have a um, grasp the concept behind it. And like I say, now if you were to watch some YouTube videos, you'd probably get enough of that concept to then make sense of the book. Um, so I guess that's almost a criticism in that I'm saying that this book is, isn't complete in that sense. It does need a bit more to go with it to, to get the most out of it. 
What's very useful in this book is the uh, towards the end you've got some real life examples of, of um, pole buildings. I call them. I, know, I always call them pole barns, but they're not. Most of these are houses. And then where is it? Right at the end here. Actually, we're not right at the end. We've got pole building plans. So this much, a good third of the book, is solid plans, and and they are great. This barn was built using most of one of these plans. Um, yeah, so we've got a small barn here, and it's kind of based on that to begin with, with you know a lot of modification. And then here we've got a, a really nice step by step guide through it, right from digging the holes to embedding the poles. So the, I mean the poles for instance, you might be surprised to learn, aren't concreted in, they're tamped into the ground. And the reason for that is they're actually stronger when they're tamped than, than if they were concreted. Yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it there, I'll just have to take my word for it. <laughs> it does explain why in the, in the book. I may even make a video explaining the whole building construction, but that's not what this video is about. And you can see here they've gone all the way from a woodshed to store your firewood to a year-round house that's big enough for, for a proper family. And yeah, it just goes on. So very useful plans that you can look at this if you're not familiar with architecture drawings and things like that, like I wasn't. Looking at these plans, just looking at the plans is, is very informative and gives you a real good idea of, of how the construction works. So putting that to one side for a moment then. Homework is, um, I think it's a sequel to a book that was a proper hippie book that was made in the 60s or 70s called Shelter. And this is the same people and they've made this one called Homework. And it's basically a collection of um, people's dwellings from all over the world. And I guess what they have in common is that they, they, they are handmade dwellings. And they go right from proper hippie yurts um, to proper hippie buses to more conventional slightly more conventional things um, to different types of building different parts of the world and also so there's a particularly nice bit here which I, I wish I'd seen this before I made my barn and I would have my barn would be one of these there's a section in here of plans which are so good even though it's only one page per house um, but they are so good that you could actually build from those plans so yeah, if I'd seen this book before I started building the barn, um, we'd now be sat in this one here, this high gable. I like that. So somebody asked me what I'd do differently um, if I started again. I'd probably build this or I might build a cob house. I have a digger now and making cob with a digger is, I think, viable, whereas making cob by yeah, jumping up and down on the lead of mud on the top by yourself. It seems like hard work to me. So you can see here there's there's all sorts. It's a very inspirational book. Again, like my other favourite books, this gives you ideas and ideas well without ideas you're not gonna get very far at all. So yeah lots of ideas, lots of techniques, lots of different ways of going about making some shelter. So if you're into building and unconventional building, say like like I've done here, this is a cracking read. It's a very inspirational book and an instructional book. And they are the pick of the week. Well, thanks for watching and uh, hopefully see you on the next episode. Cheers now.